Hi, welcome to another video in the AS A level managerial accounting series. In this video, we're going to study about budgets and budgetary control. So what do you mean by a budget? A budget is a financial plan that will contain the management's expectations from the organization about the future. So management may have certain expectations from the sales department that so much sales volume has to be achieved so that they will prepare a budget and give it to the sales department. Same way they can have an expectation from the production department that certain output has to be produced and accordingly resources the production department will have to organize. So that will be shown in the production budget. In the same way, there may be many other budgets being prepared by the higher management that will contain their expectations from the organization. What do they want to achieve in future? Where do they want to take the organization in future? And that is the meaning of a budget. And what do you mean by budgetary control? So using this budget or by the use of budgets, what the management or the higher management does is they will inform the entire organization about their future plans. It will help the departmental managers to organize resources. Then after the actual performance, these budgets can be used uh, to compare with the actual performance to see whether the expectations of the management have been met or the departments have not been able to you know achieve the goals as per the management's expectation as stated in the budgets so all of this when brought together the entire process is called budgetary control so budgetary control will involve preparation of budgets sending the budgets across the organization to the respective departments then making sure that the management managers of the departments have sufficient resources to act according to the budgets and finally comparing the actual versus budgetary performance or actual versus planned performance to ensure or to see the management managers have been able to achieve the performance or no and if not then what is the reason behind it so that in future the performance can be improved or in future the budgets or the targets can be met. So some of the types of budgets that an organization can prepare will be sales budget, production budget, purchase budget, trade receivables and trade payable budget, cash budget and the master budget. We will see each of these budgets in detail, the meaning and the format. So what are the advantages and disadvantages or pros and cons of preparing budgets? The advantage for any business is that it helps in planning business activities for the future. If a business does not plan for the future, then there will be no certainty as to where the organization is going. Each department will be working in their own manner. They will be work, there will they'll not be a clear direction to the departments and hence the organization cannot move in a single direction. The departmental coordination will be much better because the budgets are prepared at the higher management level. So all the departments of the organization would be working towards a single goal, towards a single direction and hence coordination between them will be much better. For example, let's say we're talking about the sales department and the production department. The production department or the production budget will be prepared based on the sales budget or the sales targets because whatever the organization wants to sell, accordingly they will produce the output. So these departments can coordinate better. The production department knows exactly how much quantity may be required during the period that will be sold. The sales department also would be aware that the, this much material will be received from the production department and same way other departments activities will also be coordinated better if the budgets are prepared at the organizational level. And while telling you the meaning of budgetary control, I told you that the actual performance of the organization will be compared to the planned performance or the budgetary performance to see whether the managers of each individual departments have been able to achieve their targets or they've been able to work as per the management's expectations. So it helps in comparison and control because if it turns out that the managers have not been able to work as per management's expectation, the higher management can take necessary actions to ensure that in future the performance is achieved as per the planned or budget uh, budgetary performance. Are there any disadvantages of budgets? Yes, there are some disadvantages also of preparing budgets. It is expensive and time consuming because to prepare budgets for the entire organization is not an easy task. You will have to, you know, uh, allocate separate resources, separate manpower, 
who will be involved in analyzing the market conditions then deciding how much uh, will be the expected sales during the period accordingly what will be produced accordingly what will be purchased how much cash inflows cash outflows how much profits will be made accordingly and so on so this entire process is time consuming and at the same time since separate resources have to be allocated for this process of budgetary control it also becomes expensive and then smaller organizations may not be able to afford this kind of budgetary control process the budgets are interconnected what i mean is the for example the sales and the production budgets are interconnected because production budget will be prepared based on the sales budget whatever is the sales target for the period accordingly the production department would be informed that they need to produce certain output now let's say the production department fails to achieve their target output so because of that the performance of the sales department will also get affected because if they don't receive the output from production department they will not be able to sell the output and hence they will also not be able to meet their targets so when budgets are prepared at organizational level the budgets are interconnected and performance of one department will affect the performance of other departments and finally the last disadvantage is departmental conflicts this especially happens when the managers of the individual departments are not involved in the preparation of budgets and hence they are not really motivated to achieve the targets as per the budgets for example if you're talking about sales budget and let's say while preparing the sales budget the higher management has kept aggressive targets for the sales manager but he was not involved in the budget preparation process his inputs were not considered so he will not be really very motivated to achieve the targets as per sales budget and might also put the blame on some other department for his non performance so there may be departmental conflicts because of the budgets that are prepared for the entire organization let's start with the individual budgets let's see the meaning of these budgets and a brief format and also a quick example also so that you understand how to prepare each of these budgets the first one is the sales budget so sales budget will show the expected sales volume uh, from the sales department from the uh, sales manager that the higher management is expecting and uh, along with the volume it will also contain the uh, sales revenues the value or amount of sales that the manager is expected to achieve during the defined budget period so if you look at the format here first the sales budget will contain the sales quantity or volume then we have the selling price sometimes selling price may or may not be stated separately in a, a separate row especially if the selling price is constant for all the months or quarters and then we have the sales revenue or the gross revenue that will be sales volume sales quantity multiplied by the selling price if trade discounts are usually given in an organization they will have a separate row item called trade discount they'll deduct the trade discount from the gross revenues to arrive at the net revenues so this is the format of a sales budget here the important part is the volume of sales and the sales revenues because the sales manager is expected to achieve this target for the respective month or quarter so if you see here the sales budget is prepared for three different months you could prepare it for let's say only one month at a time that's also fine or you could prepare it for different quarters that's also possible so the budget period depends on the organization and i mean how they are preparing the budget it depends on them so let's look at an example here a manufacturer produces a product and the following budgeted information is available for the first 3 months of 2022 the selling price is fixed at $60 In Jan 2022, sales are expect expected to be 24,000 units. That's the volume in Jan. It is anticipated that there will be 5% increase in sales volume every month up to April. So in Feb, plus 5%. In March, another plus 5%. In April, another plus 5%. Prepare the sales budget for the period Jan to March 2022. This is very important in any budget question. You have to see. what are they asking you to do what is the period that they want you to consider the budget for and also whether they want you to do it uh one single budget for the entire period or has it to be on monthly basis so here they're saying showing the volume of sales and sales revenue for each month 
so we'll have to prepare it for each month so let's start with the sales budget first row is sales quantity in units for jan 2022 it is given as 24000 and then they say that every month it's going to increase by 5% so for feb the sales volume is going to be 24000 plus 5% of 24000 which is 1200 so 25,200 so I'm going to put 25,200 units in Feb column and then March will be another 5% 25,200 plus 5% 5 of 25,200 so 26,460 selling price is going to be fixed at $60 per unit they've mentioned it here selling price will be fixed at $60 so just write it down $60 then Net revenues, since there is no trade discount here, no information about discount. So instead of gross revenue, trade discount and then net revenues, we can directly write the net revenues, which will be equal to the quantity multiplied by the selling price. So 24,000 multiplied by $60 per unit. So 1,440,000 dollars. And same way 25,200 into 60 dollars. 1,512,000 dollars and for March it is going to be 1,587,600 dollars so that completes the sales budget important aspect of any sales budget is the volume of sales and the revenues these two have to be there in any sales budget then we have the production budget that will contain the expected output to be produced by the production department and obviously this production budget will be dependent on the sales budget so so whatever is the expectations from the sales department based on that only the output will be produced uh, in or, or the output will be mentioned in the production budget so here if you look at the format of the production budget it starts with budgeted sales quantity to this add the closing inventory of the product less the opening inventory of the product and then we get the budgeted production for the individual month let me explain this format better so let's say just taking some hypothetical example here let's say the production in a given month is 100 units and let's say the opening balance of the product at the beginning of the month opening balance of the output is 20 units and during the period let's say 90 units have been sold so how much should be the closing balance of output at the end of the month opening balance plus whatever is produced because opening balance plus production output is what is available for sale during the month out of this whatever is sold if we deduct that we get the closing balance so in this case 20 plus 100 minus 90 so at the end we are left with 30 units in closing balance so let me rewrite the formula here closing balance is equal to opening balance plus production output minus sales output now rearranging this particular formula what I'll do is I will keep the production output on one side and shift everything else on the other side. So closing balance plus sales minus opening balance is equal to production. So this formula has been used here in the format. We start with the budgeted sales quantity, whatever has to be sold. If you see here on the left hand side, sales is plus to this the closing inventory the inventory that is required at the end of each month that will be added and then whatever is the opening inventory at the beginning of that month that will be subtracted so then what we get here is the budgeted output that has to be produced by the production department in that particular month so i hope the format is now clear you don't need to mug it up without understanding the formula you can understand why is the format prepared in a certain way Let's do an example on production budget. A manufacturer produces a product and the following budget information is available for the first three months of 2022. In Jan 2022, sales are expected to be 24,000 units and anticipated that there will be an increase of 5%. Jan 
every month so basically this is a continuation of the previous example closing inventory at the end of each month will be maintained at one third of the expected sales volume of the following month which means let's say we're talking about jan so at the end of jan they want closing inventory to be equal to the one third of the sales volume of feb that's what is the meaning of this statement or that's how you cal will be calculating the closing inventory at the end of each month and then they say prepare the production budget so let's start first we'll fill in the sales quantity so 24000 25200 and 26460 we've already calculated this in the previous example so just copying it here then add the closing inventory at the end of each month so at the end of jan i told you we need one third of sales of feb so closing inventory for jan will be equal to 1 by 3 of feb sales which is 25200 8400 units same way closing inventory for feb will be one third of march sales 26460 which is 8820 and closing inventory of march will be one third of april sales which is 5 percent added to 26460 we've not calculated the april sales yet but yes you can do it 26460 plus 5 percent of 26,460, which is 27,783 and one third of that, 9,261 is the closing inventory at the end of March. Then we need to deduct the opening inventory in the next row. Now the opening inventory will be the closing inventory of the previous month, which is obvious. So let's say we talk about Jan, the opening inventory of Jan will be the closing inventory of December. If you're talking about Feb the opening inventory of feb will be the closing inventory of jan and so on so opening inventory of jan will be the closing inventory of december we don't know the december closing inventory yet but can we calculate yes in december assuming that they are they're following the same principle of one third sales of the next month so in december they must have maintained a closing inventory of one third of 24000 which is sales of jan so let me write it here, December closing inventory, one third of 24,000. That becomes the opening inventory in Jan, which is 8,000. And I'll put it in brackets because it has to be subtracted. And then Jan closing inventory becomes the Feb opening inventory. So 8,400 minus and same way 8,820 in brackets. When we do the calculation here for Jan, let's say 24,000 plus 8,400 minus 8,000, 24,400, that's the budgeted production. Same way for Feb, 25,200 plus 8,820 minus 8,400, so 25,620. And for March, sales plus closing inventory minus opening inventory, 26,901. So that completes our production budget. Now let's go to the purchase budget. What does the purchase budget show? Purchase budget shows the expected inventories of either finished goods or if it's a manufacturing firm, expected inventories of raw materials that will be purchased during the budget period. And how do we calculate that? So in the purchase budget, information will be there about the expected consumption or sale of that particular material. And then we to that we will adjust the opening and closing inventories of the either pr the product itself or the raw materials depends for what are you preparing the purchase budget are you preparing the purchase budget for raw materials or you're preparing the purchase budget for finished goods accordingly the items will change so here we have the format of the purchase budget let's understand the format first we state the output that will be produced let's say this is a manufacturing firm the final output that they want to produce in a particular month that will be stated then for that output obviously raw materials will be consumed when the output will be produced so based on the output that will be produced the next step is to calculate how much will be the raw material consumption during the period see raw material consumption is different from raw material purchased you may purchase a lot of raw materials during the month but you may consume either half of it or a little more than half or less than that that depends so consumption is different from purchase so don't get confused we are preparing here the purchase budget so our ultimate aim is to calculate the raw materials that will be purchased 
but a starting point is the finding the raw material consumption first so once we get that to that we will add the closing inventory of raw materials that the business wants to maintain at the end of the month and deduct the opening inventory of raw materials that is there at the beginning of each month the logic is the same like that we uh, discussed in the production budget why to add closing inventory and why to deduct the opening inventory once we do that so from the consumption if we deduct the opening inventory and add the closing inventory then we get the raw materials that will be purchased during the month and it will be in uh, quantity in volume with this if we multiply the expected purchase price of the raw material then we will get the purchase cost of that raw material or in dollar terms how much money will be spent on purchasing the raw materials now that's the format of the purchase budget let's have a look at an example here a manufacturer produces a product the following budget information is given for 2022 first three months budgeted production is given for jan to april so for each month jan feb march and april budgeted output that will be produced of the finished goods that is given and then they tell you each unit of output of the finished goods will require 10 kilos of raw material so for one unit you need 10 kilos consumption of raw materials okay the closing inventory of the raw material is expected to be 20 percent of the production requirement of the following month so whatever raw material consumption is going to happen in the next month 20 percent of that we want to make sure that we have it at the end of the current month in closing inventory and inventory of raw materials at 31st December 2021 is expected to be 40,000 kilo spine. Purchase price is given dollars 1.5 per kilo. We'll use this also. And then they tell you prepare the purchase budget for Jan to March. So basically three months and showing the quantity of purchase and the value of purchases for each month. Before going uh, ahead, what we'll do he uh, here is we'll try to calculate the raw material that will be consumed every month so let me show you the format first so here we have the budgeted production first and for that budgeted production we have the raw material consumption every month so let's calculate this raw material consumption and then we'll come back to this format so calculating the consumption first we'll calculate for Jan so output that will be produced in Jan is 24,900 units and for each unit we need 10 kilos of raw material so the consumption of raw material will be 249,000 kilos. Feb will be 25,620 units that will be produced each unit will need 10 kilos of raw material so 256,200 kilos of raw material. It's simple, I believe, just multiplying the output by 10. So for Feb and March, sorry, for March and April, I'm going to write it directly here. 269010 kilos. And for April, it is going to be 277830 kilos. Why have I calculated for April? That I'll tell you in a bit. Though we don't need to use this particular consumption of April in the format but we will need it later for a certain calculation that I'll tell you. So let's go to our format here. First we will mention the budgeted quantity here 24,900 and for that 249,000 kilos of raw material consumed then output produced in Feb will be 25,620 and for this raw materials 256,200 then 26901 and for this 269010 kilos of raw material. Now we need to add the closing inventory of raw materials at the end of each month. And if you read the question, it says 20% of the next month's consumption will be kept in inventory. So in Jan, what will be the closing inventory? It will be 20% of Feb consumption. So let me take the Feb consumption and multiply it by 20%. So I get 51,240 kilos. So basically this is going to be the closing inventory of Jan. So let me come back here and say 51,240 kilos. Same way now I'm going to do for the next two months also. For Feb the closing inventory will be 20% of March consumption. So I'm going to 
take March consumption, multiply it by 20%, I'm going to get 53,802 kilos. And the March inventory will be 20% of April consumption. And now I hope you understand why did we calculate the consumption in the month of April to arrive at the closing inventory of March. So 277830 into 20%. 55,566 kilos. Let's use these values in the format. 53,802 and 55,566. Then we need to deduct the opening inventory of the raw materials. In the question, the opening inventory of Jan is given. Basically, they've given the closing inventory of December 2021, 48,000 kilos here. And obviously that becomes the opening inventory of Jan, so I'm going to deduct 48,000 here. Then closing inventory of Jan becomes the opening inventory of Feb. So I'm going to deduct 51 to 40. And same way for March, I'm going to deduct 53,802. Now let's calculate how much raw materials will be purchased in kilos. So 249,000 plus 51 to 40 minus 48,000. So 252 to 40. And for Feb, it'll be 258. 762 and for March it's going to be 270 774 basically the raw material consumption plus the closing stock minus the opening stock and that's how you get the purchase of raw materials then we need to write the unit cost of raw materials how much dollars per kilo not per unit per kilo because your raw materials are in kilos so if you see the question here it's $1.5 per kilo. So let's put here $1.5 in each column. And then when we then we, we multiply the the quantity of raw materials with the price per kilo, we'll get the purchase cost of raw materials in dollar terms. So for Jan it comes to $378,360. Then for Feb it comes to $388,143. And for March, it comes to $406,161. That completes our purchase budget. Then we have the trade receivable budget that shows the transactions that are expected with the debtors of the business for a certain period. So it'll show the expected credit sales, sales returns, collection of dues from customers, the discounts that will be allowed, and opening and closing balances of debtors for that period. The format of trade receivable budget will be the opening balance of the debtors or trade receivables. To that, we will add the credit sales that is expected. And then we will deduct the uh, cash or checks received from customers, basically collections, any sales returns, any discount allows. If the business expects any bad debts, that will be deducted to arrive at the closing balance of debtors. So the trick to remember this format is this format is quite similar to the sales ledger control account. On the debit side of the sales ledger control account, we have the opening balance of the debtors and the credit sales. So that is here on the top. And on the credit side of the sales ledger control account, we have the collections, the discounts, bad debts, sales returns that is here later that is deducted. And finally, we get the closing balance of trade receivables. So you can remember it that way also. Let's do an example on trade receivables budget. The company makes all sales on credit. Company's policies will allow a credit period of one month. The sales for the month, April, May, and June are given actual sales and budgeted sales for next month, next two months, in fact, Ju July and August are given here. Analysis of the collection of debts from the past shows that uh, the, sorry, for sales in April and May that they've analyzed, the collection pattern shows that 50% are collected in the first month after sale. Basically, let's say you sell in April, for example, 50% is collected in May, 30% are collected in the second month after sales. So 30% will be collected in June and remaining 20% will be collected in third month after sales. So 20% will be collected in July. So that's the meaning of this pattern. The same pattern is expected to apply to June and July sales also. Okay. On an average, 5% of monthly sales is returned by the debtors in the same, same month. Whatever is the sales for the period, 5% of that is returned back. Prepare the trade receivables budget for July. We have to just prepare it for one single month. So let's do it. So we have the format here of the trade receivables budget here. 
uh, opening balance, credit sales, and then some deductions to arrive at the closing balance. The opening balance of trade receivables as on July is not given directly. We will have to calculate it. How will we calculate the opening balance in July? So you have to see out of whatever sales have happened before July, which is in April, May and June, out of these sales, how much has been collected and how much has not been collected. So whatever is not collected will be the opening balance of July. Very simple. So for April, we've already discussed the pattern. 50% is collected in May. For that, I'm talking about April sales, 50% is collected in May, 30% is collected in June. So how much remains on July 1st? Let's say opening balance on 1st July. So out of April sales, only 20% remain because 50% and 30% have been collected in May and June. So on 1st July, only 20% of April sales remain. So 20% of 240,000 is 48,000. Now from May sales, 50% would be collected in June because that's the pattern. So remaining 50% will be the balance on 1st July. So what I'll do is I'll say 50% of May sales, which is 250,000. So 125,000. And June sales, 50% would be collected in July. So obviously on 1st July, entire of June sales is there in opening balance, nothing is collected. So for June, I'm going to say entire 300,000. Now, what will be the total opening balance on 1st July? 300,000 plus, so 300,000 plus 125,000 plus 48,000, 473,000. So let's go here and say opening balance will be 473,000. Then credit sales is directly given. Expected budget sales for the month is 280,000. So we are going to go to our credit sales and say 280,000. So the total of opening plus credit sales is 753,000. Then we will have to deduct the cash and checks received collection from debtors. Now, what is the collection pattern? Same 50% in the month after sale and then 30% and 20%. So we have to see how much will be collected in July. So let's do that collection in July. So can we say 20% of April sales will be collected in July? So 20% of 240,000 because 50% was done in May, 30% was done in June and 20% will be done in July. So 48,000 will be collected in July from April sales. Then from May sales, 50% was collected in June and 30% will be collected in July. So 30% of 250,000, which is $75,000. Now coming to collections of the June month, 50% of the collections are done in the first month after sales. So June sales, 50% will be collected in July. So 50% of June sales, 300,000, but it is subject to 2% cash discount. So we will have to deduct 2% or multiply it by 98% to arrive at the collection. So $147,000. Now, if you add up the total collection, it works out to $270,000. So we are going to go here and say checks cash collected $270,000. Then we have sales returns. So if you go back to the question, it says on an average, 5% of monthly sales was returned in the same month. So 5% of July sales, 280,000 into 5%, 14,000. Discounts allowed, we allowed 2% discount on June collection. June collection was 300,000, 50% collected 150,000. 2% of that, 3,000. So let me write it here, 2% of 50% of 300,000. So that will be the discount. So we go back here and say 3000 bad debts. No information is given. We are assuming that it's going to be zero. So if we take the 753,000, deduct the next three amounts, we will get 480,000 as the closing balance of trade receivables. And this completes our trade receivable budget. And then finally, we have the trade payable budget. Trade payable budget shows the expected credit purchases for the period that the business is going to buy from the 
creditors, the expected purchase returns, payment of dues to creditors, any discounts received and the closing and opening balances for whatever month or quarter you're preparing the budget. The format is very similar to the trade receivables budget, opening balance and credit purchases, add that and then deduct the payment of dues, discounts, purchase returns to arrive at the closing balance. Let's look at an example here. Continuing the previous example, the company purchased goods one month before sale. So whatever they're going to sell in the next month, that they're going to buy it in the current month and keep it in inventory. 40% of the goods purchased are paid for in the month of purchase. So let's say in April, if you're buying certain goods, 40% will be paid in April and remaining 60% will be paid in May. This is different from what we saw in the trade receivables budget. There 50% was paid first in the next month. But here they're saying 40% is paid in the month of purchase. So 40% in April and 60% in May. And when they pay 40% in April, they're going to get a cash discount of 2%. The remaining are paid for in the next month. Fine. A markup of 25% is applied on all sales. Why is this important? Because we are going to arrive at the purchases based on the sales, but the sales will involve a certain markup of the business. We need to deduct that to arrive at the value of purchases. Okay. So let's start with the opening balance of trade payables. In July, what will be the opening balance? Whatever is remaining unpaid on 1st July. And what is the policy? 40% they pay in the month of purchase and 60% in the next month. So on 1st July, what balance of trade payables would be there? 60% of June purchases because 40% of June is paid in June, 60% remains. So 60% of June purchases. Let's go back to the previous example to see what value they've purchased in June so that we can calculate 60% of that. So in, uh, in the current month, they always purchase for the next month. So in June, they're going to purchase for July. And what is July sales? 280,000 here. So for this 280,000, they must have done the purchases in June. So let's come back here. 60% of June purchases, which is equal to 60% of $280,000. But this involves the profit of the business also. This involves the markup also. We need to reduce the markup. How can we do, do that? By re uh, reducing the markup percentage. We'll multiply it by 125% or divide by 125 and multiply by 100. So we get 134,400. So opening balance 134,400. Then in July, we need to find the credit purchases. They must have purchased for August in July. So let's go and see what's the credit sales of August. August sales is 320,000. So they must have definitely purchased the goods in July for the 320,000, but we have to reduce again the markup. So 320,000 divided by 125 into 100. So we get 256,000. Uh, let's add this up 390,400. Then cash or check paid in July. In July, we must have paid two amounts, 60% of June purchases and 40% of July purchases. See 60% of June purchases is directly available. That's in the opening balance. So 134, 400. Now we need to calculate 40% of July purchases. So 40% of 256,000, but we need to deduct. 2% cash discount, so multiplied by 98%. So calculate this separately and then add it to 134, 400. So 134, 400 plus 103, total 234, 752. So I'm going to write here less cash or check paid 234, 752. Purchase returns, uh, nothing is given about purchase returns. So we assume no purchase returns and discount received will be the 2% of 
payment for July purchases, which is forty percent of two fifty six thousand into two percent, so two thousand forty eight. So the closing balance of trade payables will be three ninety four hundred minus two thirty four seven fifty eight minus two zero four eight one hundred fifty three six hundred. So that completes our trade payables budget also. So this is all for this video. Make sure you watch the next video also on the budgets, which will be the second part of this video where I'll be covering the remaining uh, types of budgets. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And if you did, please like the video. Please share the video with your friends. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon in the next video.